feels so strange to be rebuilding the Jaguar so late into the year. They've been, you know, pretty bad for the majority of time that I've been uploading rebuild videos to YouTube. And finally, they had this great stretch. I push them to the back burner, do other teams first, and then the Jags completely fall apart from the time I made that decision. They end up missing the playoffs entirely. And for that reason, we're going to be rebuilding them here today. Got Trevor Lawrence, need him to take a step up. There are some really, really talented players on this Jags team. Josh Allen is one of them. However, he is going to be a free agent. So we've got some tough decisions to make about who to bring back, which contracts to hand out, and figure out this cap situation so that Josh Allen can remain a Jaguar. Let's jump in. Also, if you say Jaguar, I don't care if you think you're right. Just know I hate you. Need to get back to what made this channel big in the first place. Caring way too much about trivial details that matter to almost no one else on the planet but me. Welcome to this Jags team. Of course, the offensive line is really one area where we need to improve drastically. Brandon Sheriff looks good. He's got superstar dev, but he's into his 30s now. He's going to end up progressing at some point, And with just two years remaining on his deal, getting really, really expensive in 2024... That could end up being somebody we look to move at some point. Luke Fortner can be upgraded. Ezra Cleveland, I guess, can be upgraded. He's not especially young, but at 25 years old, there is something there. I would say that with Star Dev, he could be a serviceable starter, but can be upgraded, let's be honest. And then I like Anton Harrison. He's way younger than Ezra Cleveland. And at 21 years old, he can really get developed. Got to get his run blocking up. Not going to focus too much on the offensive line here, but just know we can make upgrades. Cam Robinson's got such a weird situation in real life. I just don't know that he's going to end up being a starter for this team long term. I kind of don't feel like he will be. That's a really expensive contract. That might just be somebody I end up trading. Is it smart to do that? Tough to say. Receivers are in an okay spot. Again, we can upgrade. We can upgrade so many of these different positions. Running back, not one of them. Tight end, really not one of them either with Evan Ingram. Giants legend. And then uh, Trevor Lawrence, we have to develop. Need him to get better because he is going to be this franchise quarterback. I can assure you, I am not having any other backup plan to Trevor Lawrence. It's just Trevor Lawrence. Defense looks great. Headlined by guys like Josh Allen, Foye, Aluakin, and number one overall pick, Trayvon Walker. He's starting to play pretty well. I feel like this is an underrated storyline. He's starting to really develop as a pass rusher. He's not elite in that area, but he was never supposed to be, at least not out of the gate. And Josh Allen himself took a little bit of time to develop. Trayvon Walker's a freak athlete, capable of doing so many different things. I wouldn't limit him to just a 3-4 outside linebacker. He can play off ball shockingly well, but can also slide inside, can rush off the edge. I think he's a special type of a player. Needs more development in real life to reach that ceiling. I like Andre Sisko. Defensive line needs to be upgraded. Secondary overall needs to be upgraded. So then we have the, the kind of map destined for success. We have the roadmap on how to get there. It's just, can we actually, you know, hit our destination without too many roadblocks and detours? So we'll check out salaries real quick. Josh Allen, of course, is expiring first and foremost. Calvin Ridley is going to be somebody I trade at the deadline probably because I don't really want to bring him back. Of course, this is starting from the start of the 2023 season. I like to keep the same format for all the teams before we get into the realistic rebuilds and then I'll start rebuilding all these teams with the draft order already set with a more realistic approach with a real draft class for 2024 and likely 2025 as well. So that's what's happening next. But for now, we're just going to, you know, do it like a typical rebuild would across the course of the year. And we'll start with training camp. Get Trevor Lawrence a skill point upgrade. A development trade upgrade would be huge. Although, as you guys probably know at this point, that is incredibly unlikely. Not impossible, but not probable. Brenton Strange got star dev. Don't really know what that does for us, to be honest. We have Evan Ingram. At least for now, we have Evan Ingram, I should say, but... Good backup tight end, I suppose, rookie as well. So we have him under control for a couple of years, four years, in fact. So I guess we have our backup tight end set in stone for the rebuild. Nice. Josh Allen going to go up. We need to go ahead and re-sign him as soon as possible. Also, getting block shedding into the 80s, I think, would be pretty nice as well. And I guess I could see us moving to a 4-3 at some point. 
I think that's a possibility. I'm not sure that it's absolutely going to happen. Could definitely stick in a 3-4 as well. I just, uh, I might consider moving Trayvon Walker down to defensive end if we do that. And then we could draft another edge rusher or sign one if the correct player is available. I think a player like Trayvon Walker lets you keep your options open, which flexibility is good, if you know what I mean. Well, this is unfortunate. The top three players in the class are all quarterbacks. Well, maybe fortunate in some ways that it leaves, you know, quarterbacks being drafted at the top of the board, and we don't need those. But usually that also means that the quarterbacks are the best players in the entire draft, and there are a lot of quarterbacks in the top five and the top ten. Four quarterbacks in the top five, two other round one quarterbacks. Again, I guess other teams could draft them, leaving us with the option to take, you know, a defensive end or a corner or even a wide receiver. We need a lot of different positions and the strengths of the class, QB, of course, defensive tackle and wide receiver. So we could draft either of those bottom two. Wide receiver wouldn't be the worst, especially if there's a generational type receiver. I'd be in, obviously. Ooh, I didn't even talk about Caleb on Chase on. That's fine, actually. That's totally fine. Also, 2-0, and oh, by the way. I don't know that this is going to be a tough rebuild at all. The Jags are elite. Beat the Colts barely, but then beat the Chiefs also barely, but still. And the Jags are a team that actually simulates pretty well, usually. So we actually might just be in business from the get-go. This might be a playoff team year one. And then we'll look to build on that in the following year. So I think this is going to be easy. And it's all falling apart. Three and four now at the midseason mark. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I had high hopes. We beat the Colts and the Chiefs, dude. I mean, if it was 2015, that would be amazing. But I guess it's not. Lost to the Saints in Week 7. Third in the AFC South. Bad, bad news. And we're going to have to bring back Josh Allen, who is on the verge of going up to Superstar X Factor. How much money do we have? 23 mil. So all of my money will go to Josh Allen. I'm actually okay with that. I'm okay with that. He wants to be here. Long, long-term extension to stay. Josh Allen returns. We have no money now. Calvin Ridley is going to get traded. Ezra Cleveland maybe as well. Nobody's going to want Caleb Von Chase on. Going to have to pick up the fifth-year options if we want on ETN and Lawrence. Ezra Cleveland, we might keep around. Got to figure out where we can save some money. Calvin Ridley might be the way to do it but probably some other players as well that we're paying too much money to in 2024. So who's really expensive in 2024? Okay, Christian Kirk's contract I don't love, but we got to deal with it. Yeah, Cam Robinson, he's going to end up getting moved probably. Do we do it now though? Probably wait until next year. I don't really want to trade my starting left tackle without having a backup plan. Walker Little right now is the backup plan, and that doesn't really seem all that good. So I'm going to go ahead and try and trade Calvin Ridley. Our number one team need is quarterback? No, dude. Say, say it ain't so. Okay, let's throw Calvin Ridley in there. Probably won't get many good offers. I think I'd prefer a pick. I'd prefer a pick over a player, especially when the options are not especially good. Nobody really wants Calvin Ridley, which I don't... I don't know. It feels a little harsh. He's 28... Not great, but star dev, 84 overall. Could be a lot worse. The Giants are going to give me a second round pick for Calvin Ridley. I'm pretty happy with that. Don't really know what I was expecting, I, I, you know, in terms of, oh, are we going to get a first round pick? Unlikely, but Ridley actually uh, should free up some money for us as well um, this year. So if we wanted to make some type of move for a free agent to improve the team, we could do that or... We could even do some more trading. Obviously, doesn't affect 2024 because he wasn't under contract. Ezra Cleveland, I would like to bring back. I just don't really know how to save the money right now. But he is a fine enough starter. As long as we don't have to pay him more than like six or seven million per year, it is probably worth it. I just need to see where can we actually save money with guys that are gonna still be here. Trevor Lawrence, I mean, I can't really. It's just Cam Robinson. I mean, I can just cut Tyler Shatley, I guess, but doesn't really do a whole lot for me. I'm glad we were able to bring back Josh Allen, but this is 
kind of a weird looking team right now. Oh no, what is his contract for Full Lorenzo Fatakasi? Uh, I might just cut him now, take the penalty. Or I could maybe even try and trade him. That could work. Fatakasi might have improved value at defensive tackle. I'm gonna try and move him. I don't know, the team is just in a weird spot now. I thought we were gonna compete. I thought it was gonna be easy after the first two games. That's what they say. I always judge a team off the first two games of the season. Not wise. Not wise. He moves up to a 77 overall. That could increase his value. Maybe even a little bit, which is kind of all I need. I'm going to try and trade Zay Jones as well. Get Parker Washington in there. You know, he actually looked good at times uh, his rookie season. So that might not be the worst idea is uh, getting him involved more. And we're getting some okay offers. Again, I think I would just prefer a pick. Like, Sean Murphy Bunting is not a terrible option, but we'd have to extend him, I'm pretty sure. So, again, might just settle for picks. And maybe preferably out of the division as well. Trading full of Fatakasi and Zay Jones for a second-round pick from the Saints this year and a third-round pick next year. I think that's enough. It's not great, obviously, but it frees up some money. Let's us probably bring back Ezra Cleveland. We are going to take a penalty, but not really too fussed about that. Ezra Cleveland's actually extremely cheap, and we could change the offensive scheme to make him want to be here more. Don't really think it's going to matter too much. I'm comfortable just locking him in, I think. Because what is he going to go up to? Close to an 80? For the price, I think that's fine. It's really not very expensive. So Ezra Cleveland's back, and then we don't need Jamal Agnew. He's a return man. We're going to really focus on wide receiver in the offseason. We'll know a lot about the receiving class. Hopefully there are some really good players in there. And I'll probably make it our focus position here nationally as well. So we are in a decent spot. Might end up trading up, of course. You guys know me. It's a possibility, depending on how the class looks. And we will simulate here to week 11. Get my three focus players scouted. And then simulate to the playoffs, which I guess there's a chance we're going to be in. We're 4-4. Four and four, And Josh Allen did not go up to Superstar X Factor. A middle linebacker in the top 10. Not something you see every day, but this one actually looks really good. A block shed, A to C pursuit, probably pretty good. B tackle. Very good athleticism, A hit power. I'm intrigued. Probably won't draft him. This receiver looks like he could be very good as well. A catching, B deep route running. Catching traffic's like probably in the 70s. I'm not really too worried about that. Some good corners too. This defensive tackle out of USC looks amazing. And you know what? Come to think of it. Now I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I was going to say the Jags have drafted a USC defensive tackle in the first round before. And then I remember Tyson Alawala went to Cal, not USC. So forget that. Don't worry about that. But maybe they have drafted a Cal defensive tackle in the first round or USC. None jump to mind, though. None jump to mind. Well, we didn't make the playoffs, which I think is fine. It's year one. It's exactly what happened in real life anyway. The Jags missed out on the playoffs. And Trevor Lawrence's numbers were less than spectacular, which is also the case in real life as well. Could consider an offensive playbook change, and that's likely on the way. Travis Etienne was very, very good. Four and a half per carry, over 1,400 yards, nearly double-digit touchdowns, and added a few through the air as well, or as a receiver, so... Double-digit total touchdowns for him. No receivers at 1,000 yards or double-digit uh, TDs. Really were a run-focused offense, it would appear. And then defensively, the sack production is not crazy, but the TFL numbers are wildly good. Of course, you get way more TFLs in uh, the game than in real life. Foye Aluakin with five interceptions, by the way, as well. Very interesting numbers. I don't know. Do I change the defensive playbook? I'm not really super concerned with sacks as long as our defense is playing well. About middle of the pack this year in terms of points allowed. And the offense was a little bit worse than average. So changes definitely could be on the way. I'd like to free up a little bit more money. And we really just need to kill the draft. So if I can get in position to get some game-changing players, we're going to do it. We're picking probably around the middle of the pack, you know, like 18, something like that. And the Bills actually beat the Cowboys in the Super Bowl as Dak Prescott wins MVP and Tyrell Dodson wins Super Bowl MVP. G. Rice, Byron Young are your rookies of the year. Dak Prescott and Micah Parsons are your players of the year. 
on offense and defense. Mike McCarthy, coach of the year. Dak Prescott, MVP. It's all Cowboys all the time here in Madden land. It's unbelievable. I think we'll hold off on picking up the options and just extend these guys. Trevor Lawrence gets a little bit scary because he doesn't actually want to be here. What are his motivations? Just the offensive scheme. We're going to change it. We're going to change it for our franchise quarterback. No worry there at all. Everybody else can just go. These top two are under contract already for another season. So we'll just extend them in 2024 and be good to go. Offense and defense probably will change. We have 23 million in available salary cap. Might be just a smart idea to hold on to most of that unless there's a true game changer in free agency. And there often is not. Tyron Smith, Amari Cooper, Patrick Queen. Yeah, I mean, no one really jumping out to me. Obviously, these top couple of guys are really good players. And then Patrick Queen is the youngest of the bunch, someone we could actually develop and be, you know, a 90 overall at some point. But am I really looking to sign a linebacker? Probably not. Probably not. We already have, you know, Devin Lloyd, Chad Muma, Foye Lewican, and don't know that we really need another one. Ventrell Miller as well. Kind of forgot he was an NFL player. Yasir Abdullah. I think we just kind of stick to what we have. Darius Williams could get moved. Maybe if there's a younger cornerback we could add to the bunch. I plan on drafting one or two. And I think the wise move is going to be drafting that defensive tackle in the first round if we can get in position for him. Didn't see exactly how he uh, ended up looking because we made him a focus player. I don't know if we got to 100% on him, but he did look good. I know he looked good. And that was Glenn Lynch. And he apparently is not good. Of round two to three talent. Got A power moves, B finesse moves, C block shit, and tackle. He's a really good athlete. How is he around two to three talent? I don't really get that. Well, maybe we pivot now because I'm not going to draft a second or third round guy in the first round. That's not going to happen. Lynn Thorpe maybe is the one, round one talent. I like that. Not the fastest, but has great acceleration. Route running is good enough. Interesting player. I know I'm chomping at the bit to add another LaVisca Chenault to this team. Bobby Talley. True round one talent. True top five talent, should I say. B-man, A-press, B-zone, 22 years old. Also 6'4 out of Arizona with elite acceleration and agility, which is insane at that height. Great speed. And I think we found our pick. Almost for sure. I'm thinking Bobby Talley could be the one. There are some good-looking corners down the board as well. Not amazing, but, like, fine. And that could be used to uh, kind of fill out this team. But Bobby Talley, yeah, I think we found our guy. That's for sure. What about Jeff Okuda? Jeff Okuda could be a decent addition. He is 25 years old. Only normal dev, but 76 overall. Not incredibly expensive. And a solid third option at corner. Darius Williams, as I mentioned, is going to be traded. Tyson Campbell, CB1, and that corner that we saw in the draft, that's got to be CB2. Ooh, Max Cherry down the board from Texas. Also a true round one talent. I like that. Uh, Max Cherry's father, he calls Pop, Pop Cherry, uh, pretty good as well, former, former star. Why is it not just starting out with quarterbacks? Just start taking QBs, please. Why would the Patriots take a defensive end? Just get a quarterback in there. Come on, Bobby Talley is supposed to go inside the top 10. The Chiefs are picking inside the top 10. What happened? I got questions there. We are at 18. Like I estimated very well. Uh, I'm going to have to move up. Just going to need that corner, probably. So, that's the game plan. Got to get inside the top 10. The Eagles are looking for a right guard. This could be a really good time to trade the Sheriff. Do still need help on the offensive interior uh, as well, but ooh, the Eagles actually cannot afford to take on Sheriff unless we take on a bad contract of theirs, which I don't know that that's going to be incredibly possible because if you're talking about players getting paid that much, they're going to be good. It means they're going to be more difficult to trade for. And yeah, it's not going to happen. I don't know who Andrew Winger talked into giving him the trade target young tag, but that is out of control. How did he get that? Trading a 1, a 3, a 4 this year, and then two future 4s to move up about 10 spots here. Or 10 spots exactly, 18 to 8. 
expecting that corner to still be on the board. And he's supposed to go, you know, to the Chiefs at nine. So uh, I'm hoping that he's still going to be available at eight. I traded up with the expectation that he would be, as Lynn Thorpe was a true round one talent and is now a round one to two talent. How does that work? Max Cherry is still a true round one, though. They're probably the same overall, and they changed the cutoff. Would be my expectation. But I guess you never know. But Bobby Talley remains at that true top five talent. B-man, A-press, B-zone, great speed, elite acceleration, and agility. Ran in the four threes. Looks awesome. And is now a Jaguar with hidden development. New Jaguar has at least star dev, 94 speed and acceleration. Great change of direction and agility with incredible size. What a pickup. And I think we just simulate to the second round now, see what's available. Make a decision based on that. Don't pick again for about, well, 16 picks. I can do the math on 18 and 2. Oh, okay. I think we found our pick. It's going to be a rare offensive lineman drafted for me here. But the key ratings are good. B awareness, A impact, B pass block, and B run block. And also, great acceleration with elite strength, great speed. And he's a big dude. 6'3", 342. I think that's going to be the pick for us. The range is right. And... I'm not sure that there's anyone else that we're looking at that really makes sense at this spot other than the offensive lineman. We need to improve on the line anyway. This is just kind of a no-brainer. How's Brett Barnett looking? He was a focus player of mine. Looks good, admittedly, but I don't think as good as the guard we're about to take. Jace Rutherford from USC. Welcome to the Jags. Only normal development is tough because when you're drafting offensive linemen, you're drafting for that hidden development. 93 strength is amazing. 83 Excel is really good. 72 speed is really good. But normal dev is not really good. Trading Darius Williams, Brandon Sheriff, a second round pick this year, number 58, a fifth and a sixth as well for Jerry Tillery and Isaiah Oliver, mostly cap additions there. And then a second round pick this year and next year. So we're trading up in the second round as well as getting a second round pick next year. I just want to ensure that we get the receiver we want. So, had to move up. He might have been available down the board. Of course, I am talking about Max Cherry. And, yes, is still available. Looks good. Looks solid. I'm not sure if he's going to be a superstar type player. But, really solid route running. Be catching a spectacular catch. Maybe even better than I thought at first glance, to be honest is 23 so a little bit older but should be very good only normal development but athletic ratings are good overall should be pretty good as well do we draft another texas receiver here or is it a trap sorry about that uh j trap decent athlete Ooh, looks to be very good after the catch i'm actually talking myself into this one a spectacular catch a spin move a kick returns interesting b short route running b deep route running a ball carrier vision Got to throw the horns up, you know? This is an option. And I think it's the best option. We don't really need linebacker that badly. So, well, I might end up, you know, drafting one. It's not a huge position of need. How good is Cordale Horn here? Out of Tennessee. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty good. Don't know about him as a run blocker. I think I'm going to draft the receiver. I think it's not a trap. I think this is the correct decision. J Trap, welcome to the team. Also, normal development. Oh, you're kidding me. And then we don't pick again until the fourth round. So, it might have been a trap. Might have been a trap. I kind of think I should get in position to draft James Wilbon. A pursuit, a tackle. Block shedding, I think is going to be pretty good. Zone coverage, pretty good, probably. Elite speed, great acceleration. Only 21 years old. I'm thinking about it. I know linebacker is not the biggest need, but it's definitely in consideration. Also, getting another offensive lineman in the mix wouldn't be the worst idea. Here's a pretty good-looking defensive tackle, actually. Made him a focus player. B block shedding is a bit surprising with elite speed. Ooh. Christian Hatcher actually looks pretty good. Maybe a Jason Hatcher relative? You guys remember Jason Hatcher? He had a run. Jason Hatcher was one of the better interior defensive linemen in the league with the Cowboys for a... For a season or two in there. Yeah, I need I need a couple of third round picks. And I just traded players that actually had third round pick type value. 
So we're going to have to figure out how to acquire those. Let's see. And I have multiple second round picks next year, multiple third round picks. I should just turn those into picks this year. That's the way to do it. But I could also consider trading a player and just got to figure out who that is. Cam Robinson, maybe? Our offensive line doesn't look good. I know that, but Cam Robinson's probably the most value I have right now. Are the Cardinals the only team in the league that can afford him? Probably. And they have multiple third round picks. That would actually be perfect for me. I wonder if I could get even more value. I probably can't. This probably is not going to go through. But that's okay. I'm comfortable trading picks back. Cam Robinson frees up a lot of money. And we can really improve the team here. So we're going to try to make a move. It's going to be tough though. He has no value. Okay, trading Cam Robinson a second round pick next year and a couple day three picks or a few for three third rounders from the Cardinals. We're taking a bit of a risk here, but hopefully it's a risk that ends up paying off. James Wilbon goes one pick ahead of us, which is that's just the way that goes. Thankfully, we didn't need a linebacker very much. Otherwise, that would have been devastating. I still don't love it, but not devastating at least. Not devastating. And Caleb Wade's very, you know, similar if we wanted to take him down the board. Brett Barnett, I think, is who we start with here. Really solid looking guard. And we could have some flexibility on our O-line. He's the number one guard. I think we just pull the trigger. Brett Barnett. Welcome to Jacksonville. Hidden Dev. Okay. Not bad down the board here. And Iowa. Hey, we replaced one Iowa guard in Brandon Sheriff with another in Brett Barnett. Looks solid. Looks solid right away. And I would love for that defensive tackle to still be available. I think we might get heartbroken. That's a possibility. Now, all these guys are off the board. They're all gone. <laughs> you have to be kidding me. There are no favorites anymore. They all went. Oh, no. We got a good guard, but we missed out on what looked to be a very good defensive tackle. How did they all go ahead of us? That's so frustrating. I was thinking maybe one would be gone. They're all gone. Every player I liked. If we wanted to take a linebacker, I mean, this one looks smart as hell. And look at the size of that thing. Infinite knowledge. Infinite knowledge. A zone coverage, elite speed. Might as well. Hidden dev, 91 speed, 89 acceleration. Okay. Special teams. I could get down for that. All right, trading a three and a four to get a second round. Well, and, and some day three picks as well for a second round pick next year from the Bears. Didn't like anybody at the end of this draft here. So I think we did okay. Could have done better for sure, but not an awful draft. Just okay though. Well, we got good players. Bobby Talley's a 77. Not amazing, but quite good. Jace Rutherford's a 74. Max Cherry's a 75. Jay Trapp is a 74. Brett Barnett is a 73. And Tomas Castillo from the U is a 72 overall. Not bad. Really not bad overall wise. I wonder what this draft class actually looked like. It didn't look especially stacked, but we will see. And it was pretty solid. I mean, we got the third overall player in the entire class. I'm not mad about that. A quarterback at number one looks very good. George Bryan looks pretty good. Ole Miss defensive end. What could have be if Robert Kemdichie could keep it together maybe? Zach Nance ended up being a very good inside linebacker. No way we were going to take him at four, obviously. Another Al Woods in the NFL. Caleb Miner ends up being a 76 overall, goes right ahead of us in the third round. There were so many players that just went right ahead of us in the third round that were, you know, pretty good. There's a good guard who made the wrong decision there. Lynn Thorpe did end up being a 75 overall like I thought he would be. There's Max Cherry not too far behind. And where were some of these players that went right ahead of me? PJ Alexander one? I don't think so. Round three had some really good players in there. And was the defensive tackle Kendrick Richardson? No, it wasn't. The defensive tackle, it wasn't Paul Newton either. It was Christian Hatcher. Ends up being a 73 overall with hidden dev. Looks really solid. And he's got superstar dev. Ah, uh, okay, well... Bit of a miss there, but what am I going to do? This will be the offense. A lot of rookies in there. A lot of young players. Receiver is in not so great of a spot. Offensive line, kind of the same deal. And then defensively, I've moved to a 
We can use an upgrade at defensive tackle, but the ends look good. Corners look good. Safeties are okay. Linebackers look okay as well. So I'm expecting this team to be pretty good. Just need to see more development. And I think we're going to be on track for season three, season four. Going to be a very good team, I would expect. Devin Lloyd getting a plus five boost to play rec is really nice. And he could potentially continue his breakout into the season. He's somebody we need to have play really well. Because then we have our sub linebackers just locked down for this rebuild. Devin Lloyd, of course, and Fouye Luicon. So just keep moving in this direction. And hopefully Devin Lloyd has a big week in week one. Got to play the Chiefs in week one. Don't love that. But we beat them already early in this series, in this rebuild, I should say. So Devin Lloyd getting a couple tackles for loss isn't absolutely out of the question. I'd be surprised if he did it, admittedly, but it's not out of the question. Well, we lost and Devin Lloyd didn't get upgraded again. Not really a shock there, but more concerned about actually winning games. Losing by a field goal to the Chiefs in week one. That's not a season ender. Only one team in the AFC South even won a game. Texans are 1-0. And Max Cherry, I need you to pop off this game. If, if we can get Cherry to pop here. He could have a big game, get upgraded, maybe. I, I'd take Star Dev. Well, Max Cherry actually didn't really do a whole lot, unfortunately. We won 35-10, and he didn't play much of an impact, unfortunately. So, not ideal. 3-3 three and three at the midseason mark. We have a couple of players that will be free agents. Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne we knew about. Boye, Lewikin, Tyson Campbell. Really just every good player on our team, pretty much. Okay, 100 mil to bring these guys back, though. Trevor Lawrence, please don't be that expensive. He's 40 million a year, and we're going to have to pay even more because of the scheme fit. All right, I mean, we need a quarterback. Trevor Lawrence is back. It's a massive deal. I need him to end up being worth it. Travis Etienne is also incredibly expensive, but he's not ready to say yes right now. Hey, why would you want to get millions of dollars right away? Good call. The foyer contract is nuts. Saying no to more than 15 million a year on average. I'm stupid for offering that and he doesn't like it. Tyson Campbell, also not ready to commit. What's happening? I'm not going to sign anybody. Andre Sisko is getting close to 10 mil. He's back. Dude, this is, this is brutal. Do I trade? I want all three of these guys like to stay on the team. Rayshon Jenkins maybe can go. Walker Little, unfortunately, is our best option at tackle right now, at right tackle at least, and is too, too expensive to resign. I'm going to keep things as they are for right now. Uh, annoying. Bobby Talley, star dev. Wish that were higher, but he's an 80 overall as a rookie. Could be worse. Not get lucky with superstar dev for him. Ooh, this tackle out of Texas. And also, how many good Texas players are to these classes? I love it. Hook him. Eric Broyles. Probably not worth taking number one. The tackles never usually are. This corner looks awesome. There was another corner I thought at the top. Oh, I passed him. Brian Sullivan. Yeah, it doesn't look all that great in the end. A safety in the top six. A Texas quarterback. What is happening? Five and four. AFC South is a bloodbath right now. Gonna try and re-sign our players. Might just work by extending the deal. Travis Etienne returns. Luka, I mean, it's such an expensive contract, but he is super critical in our defense. Kind of need him. Tyson Campbell is actually a reasonable contract if you compare him to the other ones. 10 million. Don't really need any of these players back. Might end up picking up the fifth year options on Lloyd and Walker. Walker's going to be really expensive, so maybe we just flat out re-sign him. That's a possibility. Does he have interest? He does, so we might as well just re-sign him. And then Rayshon Jenkins... Uh, he's cheap. A one-year deal I can stomach. Okay. We missed the playoffs. Monster losing streak to end the year. We finished eight and nine after we were five and three at one point. Trevor Lawrence has bigger numbers though. 4,400 yards, 35 touchdowns to 12 picks. Travis Etienne was maybe even better than last year. 19 touchdowns receiving. Yeah, Christian Kirk, big time year. Max Cherry had a great rookie year as well. 100 catches for over 1,100 yards, nine touchdowns. Jay Trapp was great as a rookie. I mean, these numbers are really good. Our offense looked amazing. So what is actually holding us back? Defensively, really only Josh Allen pressuring the QB. I mean, Roy Robertson-Harris with close to eight sacks from defensive tackle is actually pretty good. 
but we need a big time defensive lineman and we need to save more money now the reason we might not have more money right now is taking the penalty from trading some players but i i actually think we're going to be okay in 2025 where can we save money Rayshon Jenkins, but I just re-signed him. That's that's cheap. That doesn't even count. Ezra Cleveland, but that's not that expensive either. We're really, other than Trevor Lawrence, not paying too many players big money. We should end up having money. Oh, what is this Roy Robertson Harris contract, though? And I can't get rid of it for now. Okay, well, that's not great, admittedly. And we missed the playoffs again. Need a big-time offseason. Season recap has the Bills again in the Super Bowl and Dak Prescott again winning MVP. Bills have gone back-to-back -back now. And I guess they're kind of eliminating that. Well, we lost four Super Bowls in a row because now they've won two in a row. Which, you'll take that. You'll take that, forgetting about the past. And no rookies of the year for us, unfortunately. I thought Max Cherry was going to have a chance with his season, but it was not to be. Trayvon Walker now doesn't have interest, which... Oh, Super Bowl chase. Okay. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. We're going to gamble on Trayvon Walker. Devin Lloyd. He's another player I think we can bring back, but is he going to be too expensive? He likes the uh, system that he's playing in. Do I wait? I'm... I'm going to wait. I'm going to roll the dice. I think we let Walker Little go as well. Need a kicker in free agency. Sante Samuel Jr. is not a bad idea. We move somebody back to safety, and he's actually especially good in zone coverage as well, right? So that that could be an option. Am I misremembering? No, he, yeah, he is especially good in zone. He could play free safety. We move Andre Sisco over to strong safety. Asante Samuel Jr. makes sense for me. Ooh, Dicker the kicker? Yes. I'll sign Cameron Dicker. Hook him, of course. Do I try to sign David Bakhtiari for a year? I'd like to sign somebody good. Sheriff, Havenstein, Spencer Brown, maybe. Probably the best combination of age and overall and price tag, I guess. It's not amazing, but Spencer Brown, I don't love it. I don't love it, but I don't think anyone's offered him so far. So we're going to go ahead and jump in on the Spencer Brown sweepstakes. We'll see how that goes. It's it's not a great free agent class, and we don't have, like, infinite money or anything like that. But if we can get Spencer Brown and Cameron Dicker, I'd feel okay. And then Asante Samuel Jr. Asante Samuel Jr. actually ends up being a pretty big one. I'm going to try and ensure that we actually can bring him in. And Jr. and Brown have signed right away. And then Dicker will probably sign week three or something, unless another team tries to swoop in. And I said week three, I eval period three, but I actually thought it was going to be week three of this. So that's actually uh, pretty well done. We brought back who we needed to. Don't have a ton of money. So we're kind of going all in. Trevor Lawrence up to superstar X-Factor. Christian Kirk superstar. Ingram had superstar last season. Although I think we started with, with star dev for him, if I recall. Spencer Brown is not a good pass protector, so we're going to have to upgrade that part of his game. But overall, team's starting to come together. Barnett had star dev. The offensive line looks okay now. Cherry actually up to star dev as well. Doesn't get superstar, of course, for offensive rookie of the year, but goes up to star. Wrap it just normal. And then defensively, wow, okay. Tomas Castillo has superstar X Factor. Not something I was ready to see. This is a player I didn't even... I, I, I wasn't really even going to draft this guy. I wasn't on my board. I just said, oh, he's fast. Let's draft him. And now he is a superstar X-Factor player. I, 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 do I start him? I mean, surely you'd think so. I guess he is starting at left outside linebacker. Interesting. Okay, well... Wasn't ready for that. Not mad about it. And now our number one need in the offseason... That we didn't already fill, of course. Defensive tackle. Get someone that's actually good. Offense is in an okay spot. But we just don't have the money to really acquire a top flight defensive tackle, I don't think. So it, it, it's going to be interesting to see how we actually manage to do this. 
Don't have a ton of cap space. Can't really save a ton of money either. Unless we just get rid of Rayshon Jenkins, but that doesn't really save that much. There's not really anything we can do to save a ton of money right now. We pick at 13. There's not really one player I'm kind of keyed in on at the moment. The corner looks really good. Which, he's expected to go at 11. We actually could make a move up for him just because he's going to be quite a solid player. And that's probably what we end up doing. It's not going to cost a ton to move up a couple spots. So that's, that's a pretty good idea. But we need a defensive tackle. They're just... As far as I can tell, doesn't appear to be that good of one in this draft. At least not near the top of the draft. And uh, that tackle is going to be really good. Maybe the best player in the class, but it's not somebody we can draft. Is a top five talent. Doesn't make sense to go and move out all the way up. But he looks amazing. Yeah, I mean, the defensive tackles just look kind of average. Although, hold on a second here. Shadon Sellers from Bama is 6'1", 369. A power moves B block shed. Great strength. Not an amazing athlete, but we've seen this build before. It's just, you know, Johnny Hamilton in Falcons franchise. That series I have going. Just meet up the middle. Yeah, we might be saved a little bit from that. Might be saved. Jeff Okuda, number 13 and two sevens, gets us Zach Paschal just for money. And the number 10 overall pick to jump the Texans. We're about to take a really, really good player in... Kareem Hart from Mizzou, only 5'10", but 206 pounds. I almost wonder if that's a safety. Speed says only solid, but he ran in the low 4'4s, four which is interesting. He's going to be a great player. Hidden Dev, yeah, not the fastest, 90 speed. Potential safety, but at the same time, I think safety's in a good spot for us. We could move Asante Samuel Jr. back to corner to move Kareem Hart to safety. I guess it just depends who tackles better at that point. And we'll move on to the second round and uh, try to continue what looks to be shaping up to be a very good draft so far. And I'm considering just drafting that defensive tackle now. He's not on my draft board because I didn't notice him until the actual draft. Ooh. He, he'll be available in the second. He'll be available in the second for sure. This receiver actually looks really interesting. Tremaine Finley from Alabama. A deep route running. Speed is disappointing for what should be a deep threat. Route running is not great except deep. I could try to trade for a really good defensive tackle here and still draft the other one. That might be what I decide to do. We are trading Roy Roberts and Harris. This second round pick, a third for Brian Brzee and a second round pick next year from the Saints. Brzee, just for the price, overall, age, development trade, everything. Just the best player I could get. And he's pretty good. 81 overall, you know, young enough. I think that's going to be a pretty good selection for us. Could not go out and get a top tier defensive tackle. It just really was not doable. But Shadon Sellers is still on the board. And he will be Jacksonville Jaguar. 6'1", nearly 370 with awesome power moves. Very solid block shed. Very great strength. Did it say acceleration is great too? End agility. Should be pretty good. Does have hidden dev. 93 strength, 84 acceleration. No gloves. I like it. Tough. Tell that right away. And he'll be a starter for us. Probably. Probably. I think I like his potential over Devon Hamilton. We probably just end up making that decision. And now how can we fill out the roster here? Not with a day three receiver, probably. And let's just completely take the polar opposite of that. Randy Bond. 007. Only 286 pounds at 6'4". Pure pass rush. Only 21 years old. Great athlete with A finesse moves. Block shedding's okay too. He also has hidden dev. And 87 strength really is not bad. Great speed and acceleration. We might have something with Agent Bond. Special Agent Randy. I don't know. Now I'm... Now I'm really considering what to do with D-Tackle. Okay, Sellers and Bond were not as high overall as I hoped for. 72 and 71, respectively. So maybe they don't start right away, but maybe you can throw somebody in there. Kareem Hart is a 78. That's pretty good already. So he's going to serve some role. Eric Royals ended up being an 82 overall highest in the class. Hart was top five. And overall, we did well. But yeah, this, I mean, it was, it was a class that had depth 
more than top end talent outside of well i guess there's top end talent too 78 overall is pretty good i don't know a good class but we didn't really make that much of it well we now know the dev trait of special agent randy bond it was superstar and he now has superstar x factor so he's gonna have to start that's just it's been decided we have two superstar x factors on the team now or on defense and they're both 74 overall or lower I, 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 should i even be excited i i'm a little bit i guess but they're not that good this is what the offense is looking like pretty much the same just still trying to develop some of these players could pick up a third tight end i'm gonna start devon hamilton because of the overall here actually no we know bond is an x factor bond has to be elevated bond i just remembered is an x factor so yeah he's gotta he's gotta play a lot and then castillo as a rush end makes no sense he's gonna be third sub lb over ray sean jenkins who i don't really even want playing anyway 85 overall rookie punter well it would be rude not to and he's got superstar dev well gonna be signing him that's for sure and we can also free up money by just releasing logan cook i know it's a sting so bad to get rid of a great punter but we're about to pick up a better one who is going to be cheaper and we'll have to extend him obviously we can only sign him a one-year deal here but mike bush will be signed also need a tight end as i mentioned and really anyone will do preferably somebody that can block a little bit like co -keefed. oh kareem hunt is a super I, I knew i was gonna do that at one point kareem hart is a superstar x factor we actually have a good one now the question is what do we do with him he's got to be cb2 now he's got to play over uh tapley that's not his name that's from riverside it's close though bobby last name something pally that's right it was close art moves into cb2 we drafted two superstar x factors and one got upgraded to superstar x factor and randy bond that is pretty rare for a rebuild it i got a lot of normal dev players too so it kind of cancels out I'll, I'll take that five and one at the midseason mark and our only loss of the season is against the kansas city chiefs by four points very much in it our team is developing pretty quickly here which is nice and we have made our way into the playoffs finally with the number one offense and number nine defense although we're allowing quite a few amount of yards per game quite a few amount you gotta work on that we're allowing quite a lot of yards per game for the number nine scoring defense but bend but don't break not allowing points love to see it trevor lawrence has a true unreal breakout year about 5,000 yards passing 40 touchdowns to only seven interceptions travis etn takes it up another level averaging nearly five and a half yards per carry 24 rushing touchdowns and over 1600 yards on 305 attempts receiving christian kirk was amazing jay trapp had a big time year max cherry had a really good year evan ingram also was on the team and then defensively a lot of tackles tackles for loss 20 for josh allen 15 for 007 we got to change his number to 77 if possible and then brian Brzee was good decent amount of pressure nothing crazy but decent and then we're forcing interceptions at a pretty good rate secondary minus asante samuel jr going crazy so love to see that and let's carry this momentum throughout these playoffs and win a super bowl here in year number three would love to see it it's now the next day we're back the nfl awards were last night fitting the sealers are on the screen because tj watt who's also on the screen did not win defensive player of the year but to miles garrett instead people were up in arms uh, also about damar hamlin because joe flacco won instead and it really it, it's food for thought because you know cheating death is impressive no one would deny that but is it as impressive as taking the browns to the playoffs something to think about division round of the playoffs Steelers versus the Jaguars we are 14 and 3 I believe I have already shown you the numbers Trevor Lawrence had a big time performance and we are finally into the playoffs big time season top 10 defense despite allowing a lot of yards I remember seeing that and a very good offense so good in fact it was the number one offense in the league and tremendous yards as well we were just unstoppable but can we remain unstoppable in the postseason 
Got the Steelers in round one, and the answer ends up being yes. We got a first round bye. So now one win takes us to the conference championship where we'll have a battle for the AFC in Florida. It's the Jags of Jacksonville versus the Dolphins of Miami. Tomas Castillo, former Miami Hurricane, gets a plus four to block shed. Superstar X-Factor caliber player with excellent speed and acceleration and is developing as an overall player. Finesse moves, playing up to a 75. Block shedding not too far behind. Coverage we already know is good. Superstar X-Factor, just 24 years old. And we've got all that we need to head to the Super Bowl here in 2025. I will do one more season after this, even if we win the Super Bowl, try to go back to back. But can it Trevor Lawrence take the Jags to the Super Bowl? This is a team that has never won the Super Bowl. In fact, I don't think the Jags have ever even been to the Super Bowl despite playing in multiple AFC Championship games, if I recall correctly. It's Trevor Lawrence against Tua Tungavailoa, a matchup we've seen before in college and now in the pros, playing for it all. It's not the college football playoff anymore. Much more is on the line here in the NFL. Winner with a chance to hoist the Lombardi. I want to I want to go super sim, but we're going to kick off and look at that perfectly timed kick. Our kick I'm on my game today. Harold back to return. That just reminded me of a player that most of you will not remember, Eli Harold. He was an edge rusher for the 49ers, didn't play a whole ton. I want to say went to Virginia. Remember Eli Harold, like circa that, like, whoa, 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 what happened to my voice? I don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Circa 2017, maybe. Either way, we're up 24-10 into the fourth quarter, 31-10 now, and that should be the ball game. And it is 31-10 final, Jags with the victory, and it headed to the Super Bowl. Mike McDaniel comes up short. Trevor Lawrence throws for over 300 yards and four touchdowns en route to a massive, massive victory. Big advantage in the second half. Defense came up clutch. That was like, what, a 20-plus point streak without allowing any from the Dolphins? Massive. It's the Mark Brunel Bowl. Jags Commander Super Bowl went. How did the Commanders get here? They're an 83 overall, and... I mean, in terms of points per game, they're average to below average. Yards, average to below average. The only thing where they're better than average in the league, 15 for offensive pass yards per game, that's average, whatever, it's within one, is defensive rushing yards per game allowed. How did they make it here? Well, get hot at the right time, that's just what happens. Trevor Lawrence gets two skill points. Did he win MVP? He won MVP. Trevor Lawrence is your most valuable player and will be playing up into the high 90s for this Super Bowl matchup against the Commanders. Big boost to awareness there. How about accuracy? That'd be nice. Big time awareness boosts. Accuracy is already in a good spot. Throw on the run could be improved. We've got big boosts for Kareem Hart. Did he win Defensive Rookie of the Year? He sure did. But you can't get a dev trade upgrade when you already have the best one possible. Superstar X-Factor for Kareem Hart. I'm going to boost zone coverage up twice here. And as I always say, do not upgrade man if you're trying for man. Always upgrade slot. You just get higher boosts to man coverage, which is what you probably care more about anyway. But if you want to increase zone coverage, you pretty much have to do zone. Kind of your only option. ETN is going to be playing up to a 99 overall still. True 97 overall elusive back, plus two to juke move, taking that up to 98 for the Super Bowl. And then Tyson Campbell going to be zoned probably here as well. And this team is looking stacked. They're looking ferocious. And this Jaguars team trying to take out the commanders. I have high hopes. You know, we've not really been slowed down in these playoffs at all. Beat the Steelers. Dominated the Dolphins in the second half at least. And we just need one more win. And the Jags, for the first time in franchise history, will be Super Bowl champions. 88 overall versus 83 overall for the Commanders. We have the advantage. We'll see if we can get it on the field. Commanders with the lead. 
Only get a field goal back. Commander's not really doing much offensively, but their defense is holding strong. They have a 14 to 10 lead as we approach halftime. Another field goal down by one. With the football, Jags driving down the field. Big play. Max Cherry for 14. Fighting for the end zone. Going to be third and 10 after a throwaway. We're going to jump in here on third down. I don't know if I love the route combos. Field goal is fine here. Field goal is fine. Down by one. Obviously, we prefer a touchdown. We're going to try to thread the needle, and it's a dart from Trevor Lawrence. Max Cherry, touchdown. That's how you take the lead in style. Of course, going to go for two to make this a true touchdown game with the extra point. That was a laser from Trevor Lawrence. Cherry with a free release, pretty much. And uh, all we had to do was throw it hard enough to split the safety. And uh, the, the corner there were able to do that. And that is a huge touchdown. No one covering Christian Kirk. It's intercepted! How is that possible? Kendall Fuller is not on the team. It's Derek Forrest. Pick two. It's going to be 19 to 16. What? What? Dude. Absolutely wide open. And it is a dart. And it's jumped and intercepted. Christian Kirk has what? F I mean, 10 yards of separation at the very minimum. At the very least. How is that intercepted? You're killing me. It's a field goal game. As we approach the fourth quarter. Defense forces a punt. Come on, offense. Give me a touchdown. They're driving. They will not be denied. Touchdown. 26-16. Two possession game. Commanders need to strike fast. It's fourth and one. Game on the line. Under a minute to play. We're going to go pass commit. If they want to run here, it's their funeral. Under pressure. Howell launches to the end zone. And it is incomplete out of the back of the end zone. Coverage just good enough. And of course... The sideline is an extra defender. You play that to your advantage. And first down ends the game. But it's pretty much already over. They actually stop us. Fourth and one. 25 seconds to go. And it's a fake punt. Brenton Strange. Just waste time. Waste time. And the throw away. <laughs> 14 seconds. Could we have just punted? Absolutely. But that's no fun. Let's give them a chance. See what they can do. Sam Howell trying to get the commanders back in this one. But uh, I got bad news for you, Sam. It's over. Last play of the game. Commanders trying for the 10-point touchdown. We'll see if they can get it. <laughs> the overbetters freaking out right now. Launch to the end zone. It is caught, and I think he may have stepped out of bounds. Either way, this ball game is over. The Jacksonville Jaguars are Super Bowl champions. GG. No re. That's, that's it. Jags with the first Lombardi trophy coming back home to Jacksonville. And you know what? We overpaid some players. But we were able to keep the team together. And now we are on the brink of potentially repeating. One more season to go. Sam Howell, of course, pumped for his guy, Trevor Lawrence. That's a North Carolina, South Carolina combo there. Heated rivals. UNC and Clemson, I don't know. I mean, UNC's not really been that much of a football school. I'm sure they played, obviously, both being in the ACC. But... I'm also pretty sure Clemson would have gotten the better of UNC uh, at those times. I mean, almost certainly, right? Clemson, a bit of a downhill spiral the last two years. They're still good, but not that good. And uh, I don't know. I, I guess it's possible that UNC with Sam Howell beat the Trevor Lawrence uh, Clemson Tigers, but I would put it as unlikely to confirm. I'm curious now. 2019, North Carolina loses 
15 to 27 at the hands of the Trevor Lawrence led Tigers. 2020 UNC did not play Clemson, at least not with Sam Howell. And then in 2021, Clemson also did not play UNC, at least not with Sam Howell. So yeah, they played one time and Trevor Lawrence uh, got the better of him. Now here in the NFL, Trevor Lawrence does it again. But that's not it. We're trying to repeat. Let's go back to back. Okay, we have 62 million to bring back some of our remaining players here. And it's going to be tight. It's going to be really tight. Might, might have to reallocate some funds. Christian Kirk is up to a superstar X factor. I'd like to bring him back. Could go up to a 90 overall this year. Down to 48 mil. Trayvon Walker is going to be pretty expensive, but wants to be here. We're a league favorite. We just won the Super Bowl. Trayvon Walker is back. Devin Lloyd could be expensive as well because he's being listed as an outside linebacker. But he should return also. Devin Lloyd is back. 16 mil for Ingram and Anton. No, they're both options. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, that's that's perfect. So Ingram's going to get extended. It's a little bit expensive, but we're going all in. That's fine. And then we'll pick up the fifth-year options on Brzee and Anton Harrison, which won't end up mattering too much, of course, but they'll be under contract. And then $2.6 million to bring back anybody else. Got to get the punter back. I mean, that's a no-brainer. I'd like to offer him less money, though, because we can't afford that. How about that? The test free agency? I never thought I'd see the day. I want to franchise tag the punter, Mike Bush. It's only $3.5 million. We go slightly negative, but I'm not really trying to sign anybody anyway. And we could also just reallocate some funds here. We could uh, restructure a contract like, you know, Travis Etienne or Trevor Lawrence even. And Lawrence would save a lot of money right now. So, just earned or gained $25 million in cap space, which actually could be really big. We'll put money on the end of Etienne's deal as well. So, 2030, things are going to be more expensive. But also, they're not because Trevor Lawrence's contract gets as expensive as it's going to be in 2029 and then in 2030 where we've added more money it's already taking such a decrease such it's it's being downgraded so much it's 20 million cheaper so we will have more than enough money at that point although we're not going to get to that this is not a 20-year rebuild and i actually have done a 20-year rebuild with trevor lawrence it was with the jets and we drafted trevor lawrence 22 million don't really want ray sean jenkins Luke Fortner doesn't play. I don't really need anybody here. I think I'm looking more, instead of depth, I'm looking more at a big impact player in free agency. We're at 88 overall. What do we really need? A big-time upgrade on the offensive line could be interesting. Maybe a big-time receiver. Tell me Max Cherry is a superstar. He's not, but Trap is up to star. ETN superstar. Yeah, maybe just a really good offensive lineman. I, I don't know. And then defensively, Sellers also has Superstar X-Factor? No shot. Two Superstar X-Factor defensive tackles in the same draft class. I draft both of them. They're not super high overalls. One of these guys has to get traded. It's going to be Sellers, probably. He looks good. I mean, he looks good. But, nah, you know what? I'm going to trade Devon Hamilton, keep the X-Factors, because it's more fun. Aluakin's up to superstar. So is Andre Sisko. What do we really need? I mean, I wish these guys were higher overalls. I, <laughs> I mean, they could get there if I had another season to work with. What would I even upgrade defensively? I mean, our corners are awesome. Our safeties are awesome. Our linebackers are awesome. Our defensive line is amazing. It's just guys that need to get upgraded. It's really just offensive line and wide receiver two. I would pay a wide receiver two big time money. Maybe Jalen Waddle's a free agent here. That's a possibility. 21 million. Might free up more. Micah Parsons is here. That would be interesting. Debo Samuel. Mark Andrews. Do I just go out and sign Debo? That's a possibility. But we can barely afford it, but we can. Rams have the number one offer. Is there any real benefit to getting Micah Parsons? I mean, yes, obviously, he's really good. Would I prefer Micah 
Or would I prefer Debo Samuel? I think Samuel's a more pressing need. Where can I save money? Von Hamilton. We do take on a penalty, but it would be next year, right? Not really too crazy. Uh, let's try and trade Devon Hamilton now. He's talking about doing that anyway. His value shouldn't be very much. Superstar running back. That's actually interesting. Mm, I'm tempted. I'm tempted for sure. Because we could use a backup running back. I like Tank Bigsby, but... You know, it's not a he's not the end all be all. Could just move a first round pick. I have a first, second, very close. Second and third, and then all the picks next year and the year after that. So Devon Hamilton in a first. That may be to land a big time receiver. That's possible. Okay, there it is. Devon Hamilton, Parker Washington, number 32 this year, number 64 this year, and a second round pick in 2028 for T. Higgins. That's a big time upgrade at wide receiver. And now we can put our eggs in the Micah Parsons basket and just say, hey, we're going to throw our best defensive lineman out there. Trayvon Walker can be a rush defensive tackle, which obviously limits the development of the superstar X-Factor defensive tackles that we have. But it makes our team better. We're trying to go back to back. And I think that's our best way to do it. We cannot afford to offer Micah Parsons. We can't pay him $36 million a year. Are you out of your mind? Who else can I restructure? Josh Allen. I'm sure he would be in. Josh Allen restructured. Rayvon Walker. Where does this save us money? I mean, a little bit. Devin Lloyd might be... Yeah, Devin Lloyd do. I mean, might as well do Walker anyway. I'm trying to free up as much money as possible to land Micah Parsons. This is the way to do it. We're going all in. This is the type of move that uh, helps us do that. 12 teams are interested. Where are they getting this type of money? I mean, we're, we're going all out. I think that's really the biggest offer we can, we can give. Micah Parsons... Massive money. And we'll see if he accepts. Still considering offers until he's not. The Jacksonville Jaguars have signed Micah Parsons to a massive, massive deal. Five years, $87 million in salary with a signing bonus over 100 mil. But you know what? You go all in, you, you better... You better go all in. You, you better not go half in. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we're going to do it, we might as well fully go for it. This is some generational waffle here. But, you know, all our chips have been moved to the center of the table. No going back now. T. Higgins, welcome to Jacksonville. Micah Parsons, welcome to Jacksonville. The offensive line didn't get improved. That's all right. That's okay. Trayvon Walker, rush defensive tackle. Could be ridiculously good. Should be. In fact, I might just move him to base defensive tackle. And then Randy Bond can move out to defensive end because he's 6'4", 286. He'll be depth. Yeah, that's going to be overpowered. Pick at the top of the second round. Obviously traded that first round pick at number 32 to get T. Higgins as a quarterback goes to Tennessee. Josh Person. And do I have anybody scouting here? Eric Klein. There might be a point to draft an offensive lineman. Might be. Now, I did it. I scouted Spencer Garner. He actually looks quite good. Power from Cal, 6'3", 345. That could end up being the pick. I scouted, I think, a wide receiver who might not even be on the board anymore. And, I don't know. I think we just take the, the guard. I think so. Peyton Brennan looks not too bad. The right guard. I think we go offensive line. Peyton Brennan look like. Because if we can get a starter. Oh, he, he's he got elite measurables. We're going to draft him. 92 strength. 69 speed. Nice. Could be a starter. I mean, hidden dev makes me want to. If he's like a 75 overall plus, I think he goes into the starting lineup. Now, we could use... A blocking tight end. We could use maybe a backup running back another corner. 
another corner wouldn't be a bad idea. This is actually our last pick of the draft here. There's a good corner, which Robert Bullock looks well-rounded enough. It's just probably the right thing to do. We can pick up a blocking tight end anywhere. EJ McGuire looks like a really good day three pick, but it's going to be a corner. We lost Isaiah Oliver. Need somebody else. And Bullock can actually run a little bit too. It's going to be great value down the board. And Peyton Brennan is exactly a 75 overall. I said I would start him. I'm going to heavily consider it. Top player in the class was a corner. 79 overall, 277s, and then only 276 overalls before getting down into the 75s. And there are quite a few of those. Not really that stacked of a draft class, so good class to trade our pick, that's for sure. You know what just occurred to me? I didn't draft two Superstar X-Factor defensive tackles in the same draft. One of them was Superstar, but got upgraded to Superstar X-Factor in training camp, and I chose to start him instead. So... You know, whatever. And we're going to get a big plus five to block shed for Trayvon Walker. That's going to help with the transition to being a pure defensive tackle. We're looking good. I signed some free agents, freed up a little bit of money, brought in Tyler Algier, and just some backups across the board. We have to cut six players, but it's going to be nobody impactful. And we're ready to go. Brett Barnett, of course, is our starting center. I am starting the right guard we just drafted. He's only a minus two overall and maybe a superstar dev. Probably not, but it's a possibility. We've drafted so well in this rebuild for the most part overall. So he's going to get the start, try to ride the hot hand, and you know, all these guys can get cut. Damn, the Texans are an 88 overall right now. Could be tough to win the AFC South again, especially securing a first round bye could be difficult. But we've got the talent to do it. Going to start Brennan. At right guard. Team looks great. Defensively, you guys know the deal. Bond is going to be a backup defensive end. Signed Majay Sanders as well. Caden Ellis, little Falcons franchise love. Our fourth corner could be better, but it'll be okay. Signed Terrell Edmonds as well. Of course, the kicker and punter situation is great. Micah Parsons, Trayvon Walker, Brian Brzee, Josh Allen is a nasty pass rush. And... I think we keep the linebackers as is. Boye Aluikin is regressing a bit. He's 31 years old. It makes sense. That's why that contract didn't make sense. But if you're trying to win right now, we had to pay him. And, I mean, it, it paid off. We won a Super Bowl. I think you'll take that. Obviously, you will. Well, the Texans are 1-6. and six, And we are undefeated at 6-0. Oh. I don't want to jinx anything, but surely have already solidified a spot in the playoffs not for sure i guess and that's what solidified means but it's got to be pretty close it would have to be some type of unbelievable nearly unimaginable collapse don't see any abilities for peyton brennan tell me he hasn't reached the snap count yet nope just star dev that's okay still good playoff time 16 and 1 if you add up the records of the afc south teams it, it barely reaches the amount of wins that we had. Unbelievable season. Couldn't pull off the undefeated season, but just one win shy of that. Who was the one team that managed to end our undefeated run? Well, it wasn't in the first half. Week 17, it was a three-point loss at the hands of the New York Giants. I, you know, that's a heck of a heck of a team. What are you going to do? That's That's a great football team. A lot of success a while ago, but either way, first round by Trevor Lawrence. What a year, 4,400 yards, 44 touchdowns, only two interceptions. Travis Etienne over 1,700 yards at five and a half per carry, 23 touchdowns. He averaged 100 yards per game. Receiving T Higgins was the X factor addition to our team. What a year, 16 touchdowns. And Christian Kirk was not too far behind. Just T. Higgins made, you know, the most of his catches. Kirk needed more uh, to reach these numbers. And, of course, the yardage for T. Higgins was way more. But I don't care. I mean, I care about winning, and that's what we did. Micah Parsons made a big impact. 22 TFLs, 20 and a half sacks. Josh Allen really didn't do a whole lot, but he didn't have to. Everyone was so good. 
We'll take it. Tyson Campbell, five picks as well. Offense playing great. Defense playing great. And I don't want to say I have the feeling of a first round Elim, but when things are going too well, that's just genuinely where it ends up going. I, I, I wish it was not the case, but that's genuinely how I feel. Generally, uh, bad things happen when you think you can't be beat. That's when they get you. And it's the Ravens. The Ravens are a tough team. The Ravens are a tough team. Got them in the divisional. We have home field advantage. I'm not going to jump in. It's just the divisional. If they beat us, they beat us. We had a great run. It'd be a disappointing end to the season. And I have had that happen at the hands of the Ravens probably too many times. But we're not going to lose. You know what? Because we have confidence. And that's going to be enough. It was not enough. Yeah, I mean, it's just always the case, isn't it? That is the season. 16-1. and one, And then a first round elimination. After our last three games we've played, two losses, and we went 16 and one. Won, what, 15 in a row? I think, yeah, 15 in a row. And then lost two of our last three. Monumental Chargers against the Jaguars type collapse. ETN up to Superstar X Factor, Higgins up to Superstar. That's the video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. This was a fun one. This team ended up being sick. Bobby Tally up to Superstar Dev as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe. Take it easy.